Hey, this is Jersey. You're listening to the Garden State. You're listening to the Garden State, the only New Jersey podcast that gives you all the news you need to hear this week. My name is Josh Sobo. My name is Josh Chomick. And I'm Jordan. Jordan, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Our own Jimmy Parks is out this week, um, but it's good to be back. It is Friday morning when we were recording this, so if you are um, driving home from work listening to this, or you're at work listening to it on Friday, this is a one of those special day of podcasts that they're pretty rare, but they happen. Just has to happen that way this week. It has to, yeah. My fault, but we are... It's Josh's fault. But really, we're not putting the blame on anyone here. But it's my fault. Yeah. But welcome back, guys. It's it's so good to be back. I'm, we're officially in the swing of 2024. What? It's the first episode of the new year. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You scared me there for a second, when you, the way you just moved like that. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I reacted to what you said. It's the first episode of 2024. Crazy. And we have high hopes for this year. We have our, our annual Garden State Business Dinner Monday night. Jordan, you excited for that? I am very excited. The shareholders are coming together. Last year, we went to Arthur's Steakhouse in Morris Plains, which was delightful. Where is it this year? What's the name of the place? Uh, are we saying it? It's on your invite, yeah. Oh, we sent it out already. <laughs> We're going to a little spot called Roots. Roots Steakhouse. Roots. Roots. Yeah, we were going to- Apparently, say, it's good. It's, I mean, it's- You guys haven't been there? Josh I've has. been. I've been. It's just, you know, it's a good steakhouse. Good little local steakhouse kind of spot. All right. Um, I'll trust you. Yeah, it was either that or Arby's. So, <laughs> you know but, what's funny about culture? This is like a Jersey thing. In Jersey, we have such high standard for food. In other places, I feel like it's not always the case. And I used to work in um, in Michigan. So, I'd take flights out to Michigan for, for work trips. And I was one time with this guy, and he's like, hey, man, we got some good food near here. Would you prefer Wendy's or Arby's? And I just was like, I couldn't believe that that was like the standard. Those are the options you got. That's Wendy's it. or Arby's. I'm like, I guess we're going <laughs> Arby's then. I mean, I don't know. Like, but in Jersey, if, if, I, if I was like, hey, we're going to get some good food, it'd be like, you know. Local spots. Local, a local spot that has like great Portuguese barbecue or like, I don't know. That's the, that's the example that comes to my mind for some reason. Yeah, dude. I don't know. We have it really good in Jersey. We have, so, we have the best food in the world in Jersey because everyone comes together here. That's why You're, there's never a shortage of options. No, but it's true. It's true. We have food that other people don't have. Um, and we should be grateful for well, that. They say we're like the melting pot, right? We have like a little bit of everything here. Well, America's supposed to be the melting pot, but I think Jersey's the melting pot within the melting pot. It, it really is though. Com- Cause cause so close like to Michigan. Cl- close to Ellis Island. But there are, there are uh, immigrant groups in every area. Cause if you go to Michigan, there's a big Dutch set, a lot of Dutch settlers up there. But like, so. I don't want to offend the Dutch, but would you rather go to a Portuguese barbecue spot or Dutch food spot? Portuguese barbecue. Exactly. I don't even know what Dutch food is. And I, I don't even know what Dutch in me. <laughs> <laughs> they make great clogs, I think, right? What's a clog? Can you, can you eat a clog? Wood, wooden shoes. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. So, hey, everybody, welcome back. Josh, before we get into 2024 and all that it has. And we're in it, baby. <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> before we get into the... The, the entree that is 2024. Yes. Because right now this is just the app. Ooh. Ooh. What did you do this weekend? Well, it was New Year's Eve. Yeah. This did weekend. Any, any fun Sunday plans? night. Yes. Yeah, so I, we went to the lentil drop that you guys are talking about. <gasps> That's right. The M&M drop. You were last week. You're like, Josh, Jimmy, you guys should go to this thing. And me and Jimmy are like, all right, cool. Let's go do some field reporting. So let's give some context here to the listeners. Hackettstown, New Jersey. It's out Route 80. Um... They are, have been a longtime producer of M and M's, the candy. It's produced in Hackettstown. So the Mars this factory. Year, well, yeah. So maybe they produce other things too at that factory. I don't know what else Mars makes, but yeah, M and M's like their main thing. Mars makes like every candy you can think of. Um, so this year, Mars donated a forty-inch M and M covered in LEDs that was going to be dropped at midnight. Yes. And you went on the ground. Oh yeah. To witness it drop at midnight in Hackettstown. Absolutely electric. First impressions. It was really cool. I was, I didn't know what to expect showing up to this town. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in the downtown of Hackettstown. Mm-hmm. So we parked, we walked, and all the streets are closed, obviously. And there were a lot of people there. Thousands of people. Wow. Like, the town showed up. Like, you could tell people were really excited that they finally had something going on New Year's Eve in this town. And... 
the hype was real. There were so many people hanging around, every bar, all the restaurants, everything was open. There was lines out the door everywhere you went. Really? Yeah. Like we were starving. There was only one food truck and we were starving and we're like, what are we going to do for food? Luckily it was 1030 at night. We got there a little earlier. We went to a local Portuguese barbecue spot because that was the only place without a line. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, sweet. I'm down 1030. Let's have some Portuguese barbecue to like ring in the new year. So we had Portuguese barbecue incredible. We sat down really good stuff. I forgot the name of the spot, but it's right down in uh, Hackenstown. And then we just walked, it was 11 o'clock. We walked near the, the giant M&M to get a good spot to film it. And just so many people and it ended up being really, really cool. So watching your video, a lot of the critique, a lot the com- of critique in the comments was it didn't fully drop at 12 o'clock. Yeah. So how's that? What's the rule? Is this supposed to be like all the way at the bottom that's By the, the time. point. Yeah, it's supposed to drop for the new year. Ah, uh, is that how they do it on Times Square? Yeah. So, so yeah, I wonder if someone messed up or they just didn't even know. Well, I think it had a longer drop length than they were anticipating. Yeah. So maybe it should have been like a 60 second drop. Yeah. But I will say seeing it drop like five feet and then everyone would scream Happy New Year, it, it did feel <laughs> kind of like um, anticlimactic. It, yeah, but in the moment though, people had like their confetti cannons, everyone was cheering. It seemed like everyone was happy. Like people weren't expecting a Times Square type yeah. drop. They're like, all right, this is pretty cool. We're going to enjoy it as is. But you're right. Looking from the outside in, there could have it could have been a lot better, um, the drop itself. But also like the whole... The event as a whole was really cool, but like I feel like last for next year, they could definitely get some more food trucks in there, yeah. open up some more businesses because the lines were just out of this world. And I feel like they can attract more people if they just, you know, set up set it up a little bit. I have a few suggestions for them. I didn't even go, but I I feel like this would be a fun event to plan. Yeah, there's there's a lot they they could add. The first thing I was thinking, I said this to you, is they should get a massive projector and project a clock slash like news live stream footage of different places around the world because you figure if you watch there's people in like nashville doing the ball drop new york la just have some entertainment going on while the people are hanging out Something they, they, they just at. don't but they don't want to associate with new york like the, the mayor even said like this is not new york this is better than new york and everyone's like Whoa, let's wait go. really yes or yes one of the people on the mic they're like this is not in times square this is hackettstown baby let's go wow yeah, so come on. We don't want to associate with New York. Like, this is better. It's a true David and Goliath story of it really town is coming from New York. Bro, it was so cool. Like, honestly, it's just cool that Jersey's doing their own thing. Like, these local towns are doing their own events. Yeah. And the town comes together. Lots of families. It was a family-friendly event. The kids loved it. Um, I think it was... I think it's a really cool idea. And I, I do think it's going to get better throughout the years. And it's going to get more and more popular. It's still lentil. I thought it was going to be a little bigger in person, to be honest. I, I like the idea of local towns doing their, their own ball job. Yeah. I think it's, that could be the wave in the future. I think it should be. Like if a town like Cranford got a really cool ball and they got a fire truck to drop it, you'd have 1,500 people in the downtown area for that. Well, have you ever seen in Idaho where they dropped the giant potato yes. in downtown? Yes. I Bro, that. I saw a video of them dropping the potato this year and it drops at New Year's. There's crazy fireworks. That's a fake explosions. potato, right? Explosions. Yeah, it's definitely not a giant okay. potato. Okay, because I couldn't tell in the massive. video how big it was, but it looked like the size of a car. But once it drops, there's crazy fireworks and I get it, money. It's a lot yeah. of money in production, so maybe Hackettstown didn't have the budget. But hey, maybe we could add some fireworks next year, some more confetti cannons, that kind of stuff. Once the like, the the lentil drops, that'd be really cool. I just think it can get a little bit more hype. Was there any like bands playing or something beforehand, bro? That was Jimmy Parks' biggest critique. He's like, next year they should have live bands because they just had like a DJ playing music. Mm. Maybe set up a stage, a live band. Like, there's a bunch of small things. Like this the event, the event was great. Don't get me wrong. But like, there's so many little things you can add to make it even better and better for yeah. future years to come. So that was like our only critique. Like Jimmy really wanted live music. Well, if you did a live band from like nine to eleven, like live live music yeah. for the first two hours, and then that last hour is just like a stream or like people on stage talking about, hey, the ball's dropping soon. And yeah, like the mayor came up. And, and if you had like ten food trucks, that's a great night. Yeah, like a three hour long event. I mean, I would I would want to go to that. It, it's it's great. And the other thing I said is they should put out. Um, the fires. Bonfire pits. Yeah, why not? It's, it like, was freezing cold outside. Like, tw- like 12 of those. Even if they were, um, I know this sounds crazy, but I was at, um, in Cranford, they had by the, what's the Catholic church? Is it St. Michael's? Yeah. They had a festival and they put one of those steel drums with 
wood in it and made a fire. Kind of like in the movies where all the, the homeless guys are hanging around yeah. by the alleyway. It's but it, it's it, worked, it worked great. And I was like, this is, I don't know why this is like not something we do every, like all the time. Just yeah. Throw 10 of those drums in the middle of the street. People will congregate. They'll talk. It's they'll an old out. school vibe. Yeah. And you know, I think it, at that point it becomes way more enjoyable to hang out outside. Just because it was freezing cold outside. Yeah. And right before midnight it started flurrying. Like wow. it was kind of, it was kind of magical in the air. I was like, this is kind of too perfect. Are these real? It's, it was really cool. Well, the other thing I was going to say is in New York, they have confetti throwers. Have you guys seen all those viral videos? That come yeah, have, like people practicing and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like practicing their throw. Um, it would be cool if they got on all those little rooftops, like yeah. five people with bags of confetti. Can you imagine how epic that'd be? We'll write a list to Hackettstown and be like, here we are the write, things we think could be a they little just bit better. This. Yeah, I mean, I think you could spend not much more money and like the steel drums, the confetti and a projector is not that big of an ask. No. And then getting more vendors. That's, that's free for the town. I mean, it depends. You know, I would like the fire pits and yeah, the CO2 cannons and stuff, but yeah, the ketchup my, fights. Pr- my price gets a little up there. Hmm. Maybe we can make a donation. Who knows? We could donate a garden state flag to the, just to wave over. Yeah. They could just wave it at, at uh, midnight. Well, that was my New Year's. Like, what what did you guys do? I, man, I had... You were out. You were knocked at like 1030, right? I had the craziest New Year's Eve, maybe of my life, where for the first time I can remember since being a kid, I didn't watch the ball drop. Yeah, you, what time did you go to bed? We watched this Jake Gyllenhaal war movie. Do you guys see that movie? Mm-mm. Really good. It's Guy Ritchie's, it's like some... Some uh, adjective. Guy Ritchie's deceit. I don't know. I feel like deceitful. You Something watched like it going into the new year? Or the- we watched it at like 9 o'clock till 10, 15. And then we went to bed. And finish it. <laughs> we finished it the next morning. And then we went to bed. I was just, at 10, 30, I was asleep. I slept like a baby on New Year's Eve. That's a good feeling. And the weight of plans on New Year's Eve that weighs on us, the weight of like, we got to do something really fun didn't exist this year for me. I just said, I don't care. I don't care. My wife is here. My daughter's asleep. It's just another day. It's such an overrated holiday. Now, granted, when she gets older, I'd love to have like a little house party, have people over and celebrate, but it was, it was a nice mix up. I feel like New Year's Eve is, there's so much pressure. Don't you feel that or no? Always. Yeah. There's like, like, what are you doing? People are like, you're not coming over my house. What's the, what's the plan? What are you celebrating? What are you doing? I'm going to sit on the couch. What are you going to do? And and they don't have plans either, but they expect you to have plans because they want they want to have plans, so they Ugh. they want you to invite them over. One year we had uh, me and Josh had people over our apartment when we lived together, and that was my favorite New Year's. It was the best New Year's party we've ever thrown. Very proud of it. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun, and we had a good group of people come out. And that was you know that was like the highlight of my New Year's Eve traditions. That that it year climaxed. That was like the the peak. Um, yeah. And I know I'm not going to top a party like that. And I'm just like, I'm good. Like I had so much fun that New Year's and now I'm just like, I'm good. We had heat Phillips hue bulbs. So every room had a different atmosphere, especially so the bathroom. The bathroom was blue and we had a, an jazz. Alexa playing jazz music. So when you go in the bathroom, it was like a, it was like the blue room. It was very jazzy. <laughs> and on the wall of the bathroom, we had a poster, like a brown, what do you call that? Brown paper, um, craft paper. Like oh. A big sheet of craft paper with a sharpie, and it was. Just, what did we? What did people write? What yeah, they were the thankful new, for, or their New Year's resolutions? New Year's resolutions. It was yeah. really funny because it was. The point was, it was private. You didn't know what people were, who was writing what. Yeah, but they were really funny resolutions. It was a great. It was a great time. It's like you would be in the hallway in the living room. It's loud music bumping and stuff. And then if you needed just a little piece, like a little break, <laughs> there's an oasis. You, you, there's an oasis. You walk into the bathroom. <laughs> it's a blue tinted room, and it's just chill. Coffee table jazz. It was music like elevator. Playing, <laughs> elevator music playing. And you know, you can be at peace. You know, yeah. a lot of people ended up taking photos in there because it was like the, the blue room. It was really cool. The blue note. And in the balloon room. And then we had a we had our entryway, we filled with probably a thousand balloons. We covered all the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. So it just was a balloon. It wasn't even the entryway. We we shut that door because we covered the door in balloons. Oh, was, did we? Yeah. So you couldn't get in that way. No, you couldn't even get in my room. So it was basically just like an eight foot by six foot box where you couldn't see walls. Everything was balloons. And we put a pink hue bulb in there, didn't we? Or no? Am I remembering that wrong? No, it was just balloons. Or maybe we did, yeah, above it. On the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It was just... It was a vibe. Atmosphere. Yeah, dude. It was kind of crazy. So after that, I was just like, you know, I'm good. 
People are like, throw another party. I'm like, no, you throw a party. You know how much work it is to set up a party? I love entertaining. And I said this to Shelby the other day. I, I love hosting a party. I love hosting. Like that, to me, that's the most fun thing in the world. That, like, that party we had at our place, the thought of planning it out, what food are we getting? You know, what's the blue room in the bathroom going to be about? Like that was, to me, so fun. And our kitchen's usually where people would congregate in that apartment, but nobody went in the kitchen. I think we left it pitch black in there with like hors d'oeuvres and stuff. We were like, ah, don't hang in the kitchen. Yeah, there was like a few sections in this in the kitchen for drinks and all that, but like that's about it. It was great. All right. Well, um, hey, Jordan, what did you do for yeah, New Year's? Yeah, you're about to skip you? Jordan. Dang. Nothing special. So did you just stay inside? I had to work, so. Oh, oh yeah, got yeah. it. You worked the shift. Hey, you're yeah. you're a working man. We we yeah, respect you here, Jordan. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, why don't we open the mailbag up and see what kind of calls we got this week? Let's check it out. If you want to call into the mailbag, Josh, tell me what's the number? The number is 908-67-99993. What's up, boys? This is Lou from Booton. I'm just calling to uh, say I signed up for the Garden State Plungers. I'll see you guys on February 24th. I'm pumped. Never did it before. And I've been wanting to. You guys gave me the perfect excuse. I'm on the team, boys. See you February 24th down in Seaside. Later. Sick. Lou's on the team. Lou from Booten. Booten I lo- Lou. I love Lou's energy. I love when Lou calls in. That was, That's that was excellent. the energy the Garden State plungers need. Yeah, my, my dad signed up for the Polar Plunge. I got the notification on New Year's Eve that your dad signed up for the Polar Plunge. Yeah. We have like t- uh, we have like 12 people on our team right now, which is insane. Like last year, we yeah. only had like three. Hey, man, look, we uh, we're, the team is growing. It's beautiful. Jordan, are you coming? I don't know. I'm going to definitely come to watch. I don't know if I'm Oh, you're not going to jump in. Oh, uh, why not? I don't know. Why? You, why? Why would you come and not plunge? Wait, but you're going to come hang. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll no, definitely no, no, come. No, 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 uh, Number one, you need a plunge if you're coming. So why I'm not allowed you? to come? Well, come on. Well, why wouldn't you? It's a, it's a, it really is a group effort. It is a good experience, you know. Um, also, we want your money. I mean, that's, for the, that's the, for the New Jersey why. Special Olympics. Yeah, he doesn't want to do it because he doesn't want to donate 100 I'll, bucks. I'll donate and then just not plunge. Okay, there you go. That's fine. That's fair. If you donate, you get like a cool jacket too. They mm-hmm. gave us a fleece last year. So oh. we're here to support a good cause, yeah. Jordan. You get, What's like, wrong with you? You do, you do get good merch out of it. So the donation's worth it. I mean, right. besides the fact that it goes to a really good cause. <laughs> <laughs> well, forget about that. It's just, just the merch. all about the merch. Still over a month away, and we have 12 people on the team, including Lou. Lou, thank you so much for signing up early. Got the early bird um, registration fee. Good for you. Guys, I'm so I'm looking forward to this like crazy. What is it about an event where if you're gonna get free clothing, you're more likely to pay to sign up for it? Like why what do we what is it about us and swag as humans? Well, it's exclusive swag. Because yeah. it's like you're getting a, a zipper, a zip up hoodie or whatever, a shirt that only people who did the plunge together get. That's why it makes it yeah. so cool. Like you made stickers last year, exclusive stickers to the Garden State. We need to make them again. Yeah. And like it, do that. you only got a sticker if you plunged with us. So it's like a one of one type thing. Something about exclusive gifts people like. It's like a, a human trait. I don't know yeah. what it is. It feels special. Yeah. Last year was the 30th anniversary. So we got 30th anniversary fleeces. And they were pretty fuego. I was actually driving the other day in, in downtown Cranford and I saw a guy wear it. Really? A random guy wearing the 30th anniversary. Uh, and oh, I was wow. about to yell at him, but I was driving too fast. But, I, but once you see that, it's like a brotherhood. You're like, you were there? I was there. Did you think we him, were there you should, together. You should thank them for a service. I should have, bro. <laughs> maybe but got, I was driving wait, too fast. But maybe you got it at a thrift shop and it was like stolen valor. What are the odds that that actually ends up at a thrift shop? Probably I very think, low. I would I say think, pretty high. Yeah, pretty high. Yeah, gonna, but you're not going to buy that at a thrift shop, though. Dude. That's true. A Polar Plunge fleece is like top 10 items you'll, you're will you guaranteed to find at a thrift shop, I feel like. I guess. It's like that. And I you're, don't and know, you're man. And you're like your, um, your rec league basketball t-shirt from sixth grade and like yeah. that. That's all the stuff at a thrift shop. That's like 90% of just, the stuff. It was really nice, though, that fleece. It's like it's warm. It's like, why would you want to get rid of that? And it's free. No, it's not. All right, so we are doing the Polar Plunge. Well, how can people sign up if they want to join us? Yeah, so we're doing the Polar Plunge on February 24th, 2024, a little over a month away. 
uh, definitely sign up. It's in the, the bio of this podcast. Just scroll on down wherever you're listening. The link's going to be the first link. Click on it. Sign up now before the price goes up. Someone critiqued us. They're like, why are you guys uh, hiking up the prices? Why are you doing all this? I'm like, it's not me. It's the New Jersey Special Olympics that does it. Bro, when I just, saw that comment. I'm like, do you dude. really think we're hiking the prices on a charity thing? We have no control over the price yeah. of anything. Honestly, we're just help, trying to save you some money while donating to a good cause. So yeah, you could sign up today. I think it's like 110 bucks yeah. to come plunge with us. Join our team. Our, we're trying to raise up to $5,000 for the New Jersey Special Olympics. Right now, we're over like 1100 which is amazing this early. So sign up and... Um, if you sign up for your, our team, we'll give you guys some more information as the event comes closer. We're going to have a tailgate beforehand. We have a, we have our Garden State tents. We're going to have free stickers, food. It's going to be a great time. We're just going to hang, party. And if you've never done it before, I highly recommend it. Yes. Like I talk about this nonstop to all our family and friends. Like you need to do the Polar Plunge if you <clears throat> haven't done it yet. It's such a fun memory and event where we can all come together as one to freeze our butts off for a good cause. So Definitely sign up. Is Jimmy wearing a Speedo this year? I Last year, we tried to get Jimmy to wear the Speedo, but he he flaked. How much money do you think you have to pay Jimmy to wear a Speedo to the Polar Plunge? Like if, you could, if you could pull cash out and just be like, Jimmy. Oh, uh, Jimmy's going to $5,000. He's, I he's think not going to do it for I cheap. Think, I think he'd be like 20 grand. You don't think he'd take 5,000 cash? Would you, would you take 5,000 cash to wear a Speedo? Well, let's find out right now. I'm going to give him a call. Jimmy Parks. What's going on, Josh Sobo? Listen, we had a bet. We were curious. Yeah. If I pulled out a briefcase with five thousand dollars cash, would you wear a speedo to the polar plunge? No. I told. What, what would be your dollar amount? Like, if you if you were to say yes, how much money would would it be? <sighs> it's always a twenty. <sighs> <laughs> no, Josh just said Did 20. Did I not just say 20 grand at least? Oh, my gosh. I know you so well, Jimmy Parks. Hey, we miss you. Um, Jordan can't hear us right now, so if you want to talk trash about him, say whatever you want right now. Jordan is my favorite member of the podcast. Okay, okay get, him, get him out of here. We'll get see, him out of we'll here. We'll see you later, we'll see Jimmy. You later, Jim. 20 grand. I would do it. Listen, 500 bucks and a Wawa coffee, and you got me. Just because of the Polar Plunge especially. like There's so many other dudes wearing like speedos and stuff like you would fit in perfectly it's nothing weird and you're gonna get 500 cash sign me up if anyone wants to give me that money i'll do it any day yeah um, i think i could rock a speedo pretty good too so <laughs> it'd be awesome all right so do you want to check the other uh um, yeah we have one more mailbag let's go that was a quick one and then we'll go into the news hey guys brendan calling in your uh resident wildlife biologist we could say so just listening to this week's pod about you know, the, the feral swine uh, pig debate, which is pretty funny. Um, so Jimmy's kind of right that, you know, once they get out, they they turn into swine, you know, feral swine. And um, they did do a bunch of management with them back in the early 2000s and essentially ridded them from Jersey. But really when it comes down to it, it's just any pig that escapes a fenced in area, you know, escapes the farm or someone's backyard, technically in, in agricultural terms or, you know, in uh, management terms, once it leaves the farm or escapes it, they then declare it a feral swine because it can do damage they and, know and you know, survive on its own by eating all kinds of stuff and, you know, rooting through and destroying other people's property. But when it comes to management today in New Jersey, unfortunately, it's kind of like um, the whole debate with mountain lions and stuff. New Jersey says that we don't have them, which is true. Um, you know, we don't have a population of them, but the, the problem becomes when, you know, one does escape, a pig escapes from a farm, gets out, and then it's essentially a feral swine, and, you know, it's up to, you know, the state or, you know, the federal government to come in and manage that. Uh, we don't have a management plan in place, so they technically won't let any government entity like that uh, deal with it. And the only really option is then to call, you know, the town, uh, you know, animal control and say, hey, there's, you know, a pig on the loose. Can you guys wrangle it or get it? And then there's usually a debacle there because they don't, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, it's not a domestic animal. We can't really deal with it. Animal control doesn't want to deal with it. So just a little tidbit there. You guys have a happy new year. Good talking to you. See you later. 
What do you think of that info? Thank you, Brendan. That was a lot of good information that I didn't know I needed until right now. Brendan's a he's a wildlife expert. I, I love the what did he call himself? He's our, our Bio, resident our resident wildlife biologist. Yeah, that was amazing, Brendan. Um, didn't really know I didn't know that the swine was considered swine once it escaped a fenced in area. Like it's just a pig before then, and then it becomes a wild swine. Yeah, didn't realize that. You remember swine flu? Yes, that was a big deal. What year was that? Like 2019? 2009, I mean? It was like, yeah, it was before 2010. I think it was like my sophomore year of high school. There's a lot of uh, panic over it. The swine. Well, what, where did the swine come from for the swine flu? <sighs> it escaped something, I guess, because it was a swine. But it, was, that like a, was that a New Jersey thing or that was like all across the country? That was everywhere. I thought it came from Mexico or something. Like it originated there. Did they cross the border Bro, illegally? Why, why do you got to always bring Mexico up? That's the first thing I, we keep, I think I've ever said. Josh, that. <laughs> go. Where is, it, where is it from? I'm just joking. I just wanted to be that guy. Um, swine flu. Uh, let's see. All you got to do is go on Wikipedia. It's always true. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about swine influenza. Oh, wait, the swine influenza of 2009 is what we're looking at. Yeah, H1N1. Remember hearing that? H1N1. H1N1. Oh, it was from La, Gro- La Gloria, Mexico. La Gloria Airport. <laughs> You were right. Yeah. So, but what happened? A pig escaped, and but how did how did it give someone a flu? No, I think it's just I think it's just a, a, a swine born disease that people probably got from the swine. Did it, it come from a pig though? Yeah. Did a pig bite someone, or how did someone get it though? Like you no just idea. have to be around a pig. Okay, the virus appeared to be a new strain of H one N one that resulted from a previous triple reassortment of bird, swine, and human flu. Were people dying from swine flu? I forgot. I'm sure someone died. They like, was, have, was there like panic, like COVID panic? N- no, there was some panic, but it was very minor. I mean, nothing. We've never experienced COVID panic before. Got it. I mean, bro, I wore a gas mask to shop, right? Yeah, that was a little extra. But, but it was kind of nuts. I knew it was extra, but my brother gave me like a military grade gas mask years well, ago. We, we were trolling. Like at the beginning well, of, course, of COVID, yeah. we didn't realize like how bad it was. So like I remember going with you to the shop right and you're like, I'm gonna wear a gas mask. <laughs> Bro, you look like a serial killer. <laughs> it was hilarious. Well, I had been waiting for an opportunity to wear that thing. Yeah. It was so cool. <laughs> it still is cool. But you got so many looks, but like people didn't want to look at you weird because they didn't want to offend you. Cause well, like maybe this guy is serious. There's something powerful about masks. While I'm because over, like, people you're can't see you. you. Yeah. People can't see you. So you could, you could just do whatever you want. Yeah. Those are the good old days. And then we just all put the little paper cloth ones on. Yeah. Forever. So bandanas. That was funny. Yeah. It was good times. What a joke. 2020 was a weird year, man. It was it was one of my favorite years. 2020, 20, uh, 2021, great years of my life. We, we had li- so much fun. At the time, we lived in downtown Cranford, and the town was shut down. And we'd sit on our roof because we were on an apart- a big apartment building in the middle of town. We'd climb on the roof. It was apocalyptic by like 8, 8, 8 p.m. I remember sitting on the roof and being like, Josh, <clears throat> it's it's 12 p.m. And the town is empty. There's no one out here. You're never going to experience this like like this ever again. So take this all in right now. It's weird. Can I, should I say what I did with that one night when we were so bored? We had a, we would have friends over on our roof like every night. We yeah. just hang out. Like, like we had like lawn chairs up there. We would just beautiful. sit. We'd watch, listen to baseball, put the game on, put, listen to music. And then one night, the town's empty. There's nothing going on. We got so bored that I was like, I dared myself to get on the roof of the movie theater across the street. Yes. And I, I mean, I can neither confirm nor deny whether I was on the roof of the movie theater, but we were just bored. Oh, there was one night they filmed the movie in town too. Do you remember that? Yeah, but that was the right. That was before COVID. But was that? I thought mm-hmm. that was COVID. No, they weren't filming during COVID. That there was a million people next to each other without oh. masks. Okay, well, it was it was a great period of time. We just yeah. we just were just bored out of our minds. I mean, there was nothing else to do on COVID, so you had to you know make the best of it. Pizza from Vinny's, the best. Good times. All right, well. Thank That's, you, thank you, Brendan, for the call about yeah, the pigs. Thank you for glad the, we went down that that route. Yes, we talked about the swine flu and then COVID, all well, because of a pig. Um, you want to get into some of the news? Yeah, we have a lot of good news this week on the lineup, Josh. Josh, the first story actually comes from you, and it is our weekend weather update. You want to get into that? I am the resident meteorologist on the podcast, so I think it is my duty to inform you guys what's about to happen in the Garden State this weekend. Yeah. It's a big deal. Before we get into the news this week, we want to remind you once more that we are live from the Vintage City offices in Elizabeth, New Jersey. We uh, have been here since the summer, and we're loving every minute of it. We have our beautiful studio space. And Josh... 
tell them three adjectives to describe how this place feels to you. Vibrant. Good. Good. <laughs> jubilant. Whoa. Jubilant. Yes. I like that word. You put me on the spot. It's the Vintage City Offices is a great environment if you're looking for a, a workplace outside of maybe your home office or if you're a small business and you need an office, uh, you know, you need representation of an office. Uh, if you want to come check out the space, there are offices available for you. It's the number you can call or text us 908 259 4488. That's 908 259 4488. And uh, make sure information. To, make sure to tell them we sent you. Oh yeah! And if you come for a tour, make sure to stop by and take a selfie of the Garden State Studio. The neon sign will be on just for you. you. Thank you, guys. We have a merch store, thegardenstate.com. If you want to support our show, support what we're doing here, you could buy some New Jersey merch. We got some nice T-shirts. I think we're all out of hoodies, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, check out the store, support the program, support the movement. We definitely are going to have more merch coming out this spring, but for now, check it out. And, uh, if you see something you like, or see, uh, something when your family members might like, go check it out, make a purchase and you can keep us going here at the garden state, the garden Check it out. Back to the podcast. Giddy up. New Jersey's first nor'easter of the season is set to hit the state this weekend. Everyone in Jersey's freaking out. They're like, finally, we're getting snow after all these years. And all these like news stations are like, this is the biggest storm you guys are going to have in the past few years. So enjoy it. But guess what? Most of the state, you're getting rain. We're getting rain. Mm. And it's only really just North Jersey who's getting snow, which is a buzzkill. We're in Union County right now. We're in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And guess what, Josh? Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like we're just getting rain. Josh, you made a video this week. Yes. Hyping up the snow. And what did I say in the video? I said, if you're northwest of the I-95 corridor, yes, you're probably going to get snow. But anywhere on the I-95 corridor south, it's a wild card. And now that we're a few days closer to the storm, it looks like the rain snow line is going to be around I-95. And it's going to be a quick moving storm, but it's going to get, I think it's going to be pretty wet around here. If anything, I think like central Jersey along the I-95 corridor, we get like, an inch or two of snow and it's going to be a wet mix. Yeah. And if you're wearing North Jersey, Sussex County, it looks like you have a better possibility of getting six to nine inches okay. around that. Maybe if you're lucky, 12 inches, which would be beautiful up there, but anywhere <laughs> South Jersey, you're getting rain. You know, I'm so sorry to say, but it's, it's facts. It, I find wet, the weather community to be so adorable. Because they get hyped over storms. Because everyone wants a massive storm. Well, everyone not, wants a Bombo Genesis over here. Which is the best. Bombo Genesis would be a great rapper name. Bombo Genesis. Or an album name for a rapper. That's like, Bombo Genesis sounds like a Travis Scott Yeah, it's, album. it's, it's a pretty or cool a song. term. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say is the weather community gets really hyped over storms, so they hype everybody else up. They want us on that train with them. And then it doesn't happen, and we're like, hey, you guys didn't have to like lead us on like that. Maybe just stop dreamcasting all the time. These big storms. Listen, right? One hundred percent. That's why. Jordan, but, but that's, what do you that's think? their jobs. I don't think it's true. I their feel, their, I feel their like job it. is to hype up people because they want clicks. They want clicks, 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 clicks. Every time they say it's going to be crazy, it's not. And then when they don't say anything, then it's crazy. Is it possible? This I don't believe this, but I'm just going to throw a conspiracy out there for fun. Is it possible that? You know, it's good. For, it's good for business. Maybe, maybe every now and again, it's. Well, I know it's good for the news oh stations. Oh my gosh, you guys are getting me so mad. Why? Because I'm a meteorologist, and you guys, I understand where you're coming from. But listen, just because we don't get snow doesn't mean it's not a powerful storm. Like this is a nor'easter we're talking here. Heavy rains, flooding, dangerous winds. Just because we're not getting snow, if you're getting rain, it's still not. It's kind of crazy. Can you say all the, the symptoms no, of the storm no, no, again? No, 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 stop, stop, stop. <laughs> but I'm just saying these weather forecasters, yes, they might be a little really excited about a storm, but like it's what, for your safety. What actually makes a nor'easter? I always wonder this. Well, it's a low spitting off the, the coast. So the oh. wind's coming from the northeast. And what types of things would we see in a nor'easter? That would, like what symptoms are there of a storm like that? Wind, heavy rain, <laughs> snow. Oh, shoot, did it work? No, that's <laughs> awful. You're killing the I was show. Gonna, Let me wind. just say one thing. Let me just say one thing yeah, to get ahead. back onto the story because you guys are just making fun of meteorologists right now and I don't like it. Um, if you live in Sussex, Morris, Warren, 
Passaic and Bergen counties, you are under a winter storm watch at the moment. You guys have the highest possibility of getting snowfall. Let's go. If if I didn't mention your county, you're probably going to get a mix of some rain and snow, maybe a few inches or mostly rain. I'm sorry to say it, but those are the facts. Some people listening are actually really happy about that because some people don't want snow. I don't understand how you don't want snow because we haven't had a snowstorm in a minute. But hey, Sussex County... I'm dropping, I'm dropping a good 10 inch prediction right here. Wow. I think Sussex County is going to get around 10 inches of snow. Slaughtered. They, you know, the squall has to hit them perfectly. We got to get a good amount of snow hitting them because it's a quick moving storm. It's going to come and go like that. And Sunday morning, this is happening Saturday night into Sunday morning. So when you go to sleep Saturday night, it might get a little loud with some rain and some wind and some snow. And you might wake up to Ugh. either some nice pow pow or just a lot of rain. The weather community has the best language. I will say that. It is really cool. I'm learning. Like when you just said um, squall. squall. Yeah, dude. A nice squall line to just sit over Jersey. You'll what get, does that like, mean though? It's just squall. Um, a squall. Basically, it's just like the, oh my gosh. It's if you're like looking at radar, it's like the heaviest. I don't know how to explain a squall line. Like I just know what the, it looks the like. The dark bands of the storm. Yeah, it's the dark bands where there's like inch or two hours snowfall. Mm. It's just sitting over you. And that's how like the accumulations pile up. So, you know, it's in isolated areas. But if you get, if you get hit with a squall, brother- you're done for like it, my boy. Those, that's where the <laughs> my brother in christ you do not want to get caught in a squad that's where the the Trust snow me. totals you know add up but um hey josh i'm looking at this map right now like this looks like pretty good so like we're kind of in the in union county new jersey we're in the one to three inch range well not the part of union county that i reside in uh, i think I'm, you're gonna get like one i might to be three. rocking with a three to six you might be like a two to four guy okay that's yeah fine. up where you are like but that. listen yeah, I'm listening. I want, I want to bomb this. Well, they say like, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Take a step back. You want to bomb? No, what? listen, listen. We're the, the weather community is saying that we're getting into a nice system for mid January into end of January, yeah. where we could see some more storms later okay. in the month. And you know, we just need a, a crazy like two to three foot storm. This is the year. If we're overdue, it's been like three years. That's the storm I'm waiting. Have for. we had a four foot? You said two to four foot. Two to three foot. Okay. Have we had like a three foot storm in my lifetime? Yes. It must've been like four years ago, five years ago. I forgot when we got the, the, the craziest storm. I have to look into my phone. When we took my Jeep out with the tow cable, how many feet was that? Do you think? Maybe like a foot and a half. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let's move on to some other news, Josh. That was a great weather update. You are meant for this, man. You're a forecaster. I know. Well, I did get a, I did get a comment from our fellow meteorologist over in news 12, New Jersey, Lauren do. What'd she say? She said, great reporting, Josh. Well, that's so that's crazy. I got a cosign from an actual meteorologist and they're like, great reporting. And I'm not even a certified meteorologist. I just read the reports and check the maps. Yeah, man. So thank you, Lauren. I know she listens. Thank you so much for the, the confidence boost. I felt really good and that made my day. Well, <laughs> you, you're, you're cut out from, you're cut from a different cloth. Really. You, it's just crazy. Cause like I posted that video and it got over 350,000 views and I'm just like, dang, kids go to meteorology school for years. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, and they don't have this power. Josh, how do I have this power? Our, <laughs> People are listening to me. I'm a madman. I'm a madman. Our Instagram page gets, well, our TikTok for a while was getting like millions upon millions of views a month. Yeah. It's down a little bit right now. Our Instagram page is getting like 2 million impressions a month. And it's I'm crazy. like, we're, a couple of clowns with a camera reporting the news and people listen. It's amazing. What's the saying with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Have we been responsible? Would you say? Absolutely not. And I was just texting (laughs) Josh the other day. It's kind of intimidating posting a video these days because it's like this could blow up and people hold us accountable to the news. Like what we say, people take literally. So if we say something, people are like, what are you guys talking about? Or they think like we're, it's real. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, I always feel like everything we post has to be like somewhat correct. And we try to do that. We're not here to make up fake news, but it's, it's not easy. It's not easy. I don't want to be, I don't want to be news anymore. I just want to be fun. Jersey culture and information. You're stuck in the news. Sorry <laughs> to say, by the way, I put heavy cream in my <laughs> coffee this morning. Dummy. I was, it was dark in my kitchen and it was heavy whipping cream, not half and half. <clears throat> and like Jordan says, you know, cream for your vocal cords. Yeah, no dairy. No dairy. I didn't realize that. So now my throat is just like a mess. Josh, um, if you really want some snow, you better start doing your snow dances because right now it's not looking likely here. Love it. I've been dancing naked daily. Yeah. No, not like that. I mean, maybe, yes. maybe once. once. On the it porch. Wild. Dances, David dance. All right. Let's, good, yeah. So let's get into some more news here. Um, yeah. Starting things off with a heavy hitter. Wow. What? I'm just breathing. Oh. 
That was a loud breath. Thank you for... Do you announce every time you breathe? <sighs> I was just taking a deep breath because I just spit out so much information. You did a good job. <sighs> you know, my mom, she was like, she listens to the podcast every week. Shout out to my mom. She's like, you guys should just do the podcast live. Like... You guys don't need to edit anything. I'm like, mom, we have lots of cuts. You know how much Josh has to read? You know how much Sobo reads like Ugh. these paragraphs? It's not easy. She's like, no, you guys are fine. You guys probably don't mess up. I'm like, yes, we mess up a lot. Well, for the listeners at home, we, we start recording some weeks at 6 a.m. And I always say to Josh and Jimmy, I'm like, can we start at 7? I can't read well before 7 a.m. After be- 7, he just is uh, he's a I, reading machine. Right now, I feel amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> but if you if you talk to me, like if we were to hang out, at six, I'm awake. I'm good. But like reading for some reason is my brain is just not on yet. I need a cup of coffee to read to the point where I can read and speak it well to the listeners. Yeah, reading's not easy. So let's get into the news. Now I'm nervous to read. Um, starting off at the Jersey Shore, the legendary Seaside Heights Club Karma from Jersey Shore has officially been torn down to make room for condos. Of course, they're making more luxury apartments. Condo, 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 wow. baby. Wow. We Shout should, out to Karma. They should change New Jersey to New Condo. Whoa, New Condo. Yeah, I mean, that was I, hilarious. It's that was creative. Wild. Thanks, guys. I, I, I thought Jordan about that all week. is on the floor <laughs> laughing, rolling on the floor laughing. Did you guys watch Jersey Shore when it was on TV? I didn't. I've never seen any of it. Really? I yeah. don't think I ever watched an episode either. I didn't realize like the club they were always at was Karma. My wife says that she's like, you, you should watch it because it's such a big part of our culture. And she, uh, <laughs> she knows all like the little inside jokes, like the note. You guys always see the note. Yeah. Do you see that or no? No. Um, yeah, there's, there's like all these little famous parts of Jersey Shore. But also I will say um, Jersey Shore is really edgy. It is. Very edgy. Yeah. And we were turned down from a, a very large sponsor, a brand that every one of our listeners would know I was I was in talks with them to get something locked in, and we were like, well, well you know, what I they said no, you know, it's not not right, and I I reached out like, well, what's the issue? Like, could you just let me know for future reference? And they were like, well, you're a little too edgy for the brand, and uh, that brand had just done a deal with Jersey Shore cast members that week. I was like, that's the edgiest show. <laughs> Ever. Crazy. They are like so edgy. It's just so, the Garden State versus the world. No one wants us. So this is big news for all the Jersey Shore fans. The Karma Club being torn down. And, you know, I will say, if you go to Seaside, there's a part of me. I'm not being funny when I say this. There's a part of me that gets sad that the era of Jersey Shore is over a decade ago. And it's just We're something so that. old. Yeah, like I remember being on vacation. We went to Lavalette for a week. We went up to the Seaside Boardwalk. And Snooki is walking and there's cameramen all around her as she's walking around. What this a is time. Just like, it was just normal at that point. What a time. So here's what it says. One of the clubs brought to a new level of infamy by the cast of MTV's Jersey Shore has been torn down to make way for a new mixed use condo complex. Karma had been closed since 2018, several years after the cast of the MTV reality show brought an extra rowdy factor to the bar. Such attention was at odds with municipal leaders' efforts to return to a more family-friendly atmosphere. <laughs> so in 2020, the club and its adjacent bamboo bar were both sold at auction, as reported by Lavalette Seaside Shoreboat. On Wednesday, the empty building was raised, as caught on video by News 12 reporter Mr. Jim Murdoch. So there's a video that we shared of this building being torn down. Um, I want to know what Snooki thinks about this. I know she still lives in Jersey. I know a lot of these people live in Jersey. Yeah. I, I went to her store the other day up in Madison. Um, Snooki, what do you think? I mean, is this sad for this cast members? Do they not care anymore? Do they ever like, I know they do reunion shows, but do they ever think about the days at the Jersey shore or is it all, I don't know. They're all old now. They got kids. They're all grown up mature. Yeah. It's kind of amazing. A lot of people were commenting though on the video. Like they're like, most of the Jersey Shore cast is from Staten Island. We don't yeah. want any of them. We don't like this club. We don't care about this club being torn down. We're happy it's torn down. But then you've got some other people on the other side of it. They're like, oh my gosh, such good times at Karma. I never even knew it existed until it was... I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it driving past it. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know the affiliation, and now it's gone. So It's really it's a sad day for all the Jersey Shore fans. I got to say, there in Jersey. I'm getting so excited for summer now that we're officially in a new year. I'm excited for the Jersey Shore on a, like on a July afternoon. Josh is trying to go to DJ's. <laughs> that's his, that's his uh, club of choice. That's your, those are your stomping grounds. Oof. You and Jimmy Parks on, a, no. on, a, on an average Saturday, you're at DJ's. 
But yeah, nonetheless, some sad news there in Seaside, but we will move on. I mean, you can go and pay your respects, you know, put a rose down and light a candle on the sidewalk still Bro, if they, you wanted to. We got turned down from a brand that literally worked with people that called women grenades. Do you know what a grenade was? No. Let me make sure I get the definition right. Um, a grenade is a term used by the cast to describe an ugly or unattractive person. So you're, you know, they, they had all these, you know, that's, that's their lingo. But what I don't get is, uh, you know, that's pretty edgy to me. Oh yeah. So let's just move on to the next story here. Josh is not bothered by that brand at all. No, I I don't want to bring it up again, but they, they, you know, they did burn me. So I will bring it up again for the sixth year in a row. New Jersey has ranked number one as the most moved from state in the United States of America. That means we're the number one state where people moved out. Yes. People are leaving. Yeah, but I feel, like, first place. I feel like at the same time, though, the same amount of people are moving in. Because it feels like the state just keeps on expanding with all the luxury apartments and all the people. These luxury apartment complexes are getting filled like this. I guess. I guess so. Um, I would have thought California would be number one on this All list. the OGs are just like sick of it. So they're like, we're out of here. We're moving to a quieter place because the pla- this state is filling up like, like crazy. It is. It is pretty wild. And... Um, to me, I was, I was pretty surprised to hear this. I know people leave Jersey. I know a lot of people that have left myself, um, but I didn't think we were number one. But it says a new study has found that New Jersey is once again the most moved from state for the sixth consecutive year. The study was conducted by United Van Lines uh, and found that 65% of total moves happening in New Jersey were out of state in 2023. The study found that the reason for the moves included retirement, lifestyle changes, and cost of living. Other states rounding out in the top five include Illinois, North Dakota, New York, and Michigan. North Dakota? Um, yeah, I mean. That's a pretty random one. I guess people are leaving. But I feel like nobody lives there to begin with. Hmm. Like all the other states, I feel like make sense. What's the conspiracy here? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That's, I feel that's like true. nobody leaves there or goes there. New York makes sense. I mean, we know people, we all know people that have left New York. I have family friends I can think of off the top of my head who's parents are leaving New York. Um, Illinois. Yeah. It's like basically Jersey, a few States away, but North Dakota is, is weird. That's, that's strange. Can you look up this, the most, the top five most moved to States? I can, you want to make, you want to make guesses? Texas, uh, yes, Texas, Florida, North Carolina. I don't know about Florida. Um, I feel like everybody. Definitely the Carolinas. One of the Carolinas. I would say Jersey. (laughs) I'm going to put Jersey on that list. So the top outbound, which we just talked about, New, uh, New Jersey, Illinois, North Dakota, New, New York, Michigan, California, Massachusetts, Kansas. Inbound, Vermont, which I bl- that, makes, that makes sense to me because I was thinking the other day- People I, are trying to get away. I wouldn't mind going to Vermont. Uh, DC, Washington, D.C., which that seems wrong, but whatever. South Carolina, Arkansas, North Carolina, South Dakota, Bama, New Mexico, West Virginia- I think West Virginia is wow. the next big wave. Why West really? Virginia? No, man. Yeah, There's nothing so. there. That's that's why. Well, that's the thing. If you just want to be on a farm and just away from everyone, go for it. Yeah. No, but what's going to happen? I'm telling you, this is the next cultural wave in our country. People are done with big cities. They're going to go inhabit smaller cities. So, like, what's the main city in West Virginia? I forget. I've been there, but it's Richmond? like- Richmond? That's, no, no, that's, that's Virginia. Virginia. Excuse me. Um, Char- uh, Charleston. Charleston, West Virginia is about to be a vibe. I guarantee you there's going to be so much culture there. People are going to leave New York, Brooklyn, and they're going to go find small cities in that, that Midwestern kind of range. I think Pittsburgh's probably going to be fire. You know, it's going to be a great place to live. Um, Vermont has a few small cities and like Burlington, right? Yeah. Um, I guarantee you the culture there is about to be crazy. All these, hip, all these hipsters want out, man. Tennessee wasn't on that list. I feel like a lot of people I know moved in Tennessee. I think Tennessee was probably last year. That's crazy. So, so what do you think about this? Why, I mean, I, I, I think it's sad that people feel the need to leave New Jersey. And well, I think a few things can be done here. We, off all, the bat. we all know why people are leaving New Jersey. We're sick of New Jersey and it, you know, it's such an expensive state. People can't afford to live here anymore. And it's so overcrowded. Also, people were they can't retire here, which that's fundamentally if if you are creating an environment for your citizens where they cannot once they retire, which we have to think, once you retire, you become more of a vulnerable the elderly are a more vulnerable group than the rest of society. Just like children, right? 
if you can't retire and live out your life in peace, you can't financially afford it, then something structurally is wrong with the state, in my opinion. It's almost mm. immoral in a way that you can't retire here. You got to move to South Carolina. Maybe we could, I know they do like the tax freeze, maybe cut people's taxes on their properties when they retire. Dude, make, that'd be make crazy. It, make it easier for them to, I don't get, ugh, this is the stuff that makes me nuts. Let you're it you're out, saying bro. like a 70 year old, you're like, all right, see ya. You lived your whole life here. You built a family here. You contributed to your community here. You were a part of PTA meetings and you were a firefighter or a policeman. Like you did your job and you're a part of all this. And now that you've retired, bye, you can't live here anymore. You can't afford to. That's like sickening. Is that not messed up? Yeah, bro. They don't now, care. I know a lot of people move in retirement because it's, you know, they want nicer weather. That's fine. You know, but if the reason for moving is solely, hey, I can't pay 15 grand a year in property taxes on my house. I got to go. I'm moving to North Carolina where it's two grand a year. Yeah. Then something is off there. Jordan, what do you think? <laughs> well, I mean, it's difficult to retire and to start a life here. So it's like, and I feel like those are the two most important groups you need because you need the people who are young who are going to take over the jobs that the people are leaving. And then you need the people who are retired who are going to pay taxes but not have kids in the school systems and stuff. But hmm. like neither one of them can afford to live here because one's on a fixed income and the other one is like just out of college and doesn't have enough money to buy a house or anything. It's a very good point. Yeah, we do, that's a really good point. I think yeah, it's it's upsetting that you got to leave when you retire. You know, that, that's, that bothers me. Um, yeah, it is kind of a weird thing to think about. But then you think about our generation, everyone's trying to get houses and stuff. And, and a few people, we well, you know some people that are, but it's, it's hard for most people. Most of my friends who have homes are out of the state. Mm. If you think about it. <laughs> I have some friends in state, but they just bought at the right time. They're not buying right now. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. recently you can't buy now. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I don't know what to draw from this besides maybe this is a good, um, well, you said that there was a six year in a row, right? Where yeah. The most moved. So wow. Everyone's leaving, but people are coming in at the same rate. I would say maybe, I don't know if that's particularly a good thing that, how are the, just, par- well, that's comes back to the conspiracy. How are the, how are these luxury apartments filling up like that in an instant? Where are these people coming from? Uh, I don't know. That's just another mystery. Yeah, people is. are coming in from somewhere. It has to be New York, I feel like. Because, like, they're the only people that could afford it. Who knows? Because, like, looking at the prices, like... Yeah, the prices are ridiculous, and they're filling up immediately, at, so it's like, so weird. Yeah, some of them start at, like, $4,000. It's like, disgusting. the cheapest unit. And I'm like, how is anyone affording yep. $4,000 a month Why would you want to waste your money like that? It's, you're burning $48,000 a year Ugh, in rent. That's crazy to think about. I mean, if you did that every year on a mortgage, you could buy a... I mean, think about... What you could do in five years, that's $250,000 yeah. saved. That's Which crazy. isn't that like the median salary in the United States? Like 40, right around there? Like uh, $50,000 or something? What's the median salary in Jersey, do you think? Oh, probably like 60, I feel like. So household is 97000 That's the median household. The average household income is one thirty five. Really? That's what it that's says. Way higher this than is I just Google's top bar thing that comes up. What about like individuals, though? We rank fifth in the nation for median income, which makes sense why Jersey is so expensive. We're next to a very big city where people make a lot of money. So interesting, you know, chew on that for a little bit. All right, let's move on to the next story. This one's going to be great for Jordan's, you know, as a soccer lover. MetLife Stadium is planning to remove 2,000 seats in preparation for the 2026 World Cup. They're trying to get the finals to be at MetLife Stadium. Yeah, 2,000 seats. So they're going to widen the field. By pulling out seats. But why do they got to widen the field? Though? The pitch. They're going to widen the pitch. Yeah, but they've had soccer games here before. Why is World Cup? I need like a World Cup expert to speak to me here. But like I've seen Argentina, Brazil uh, play at MetLife before. They didn't have to widen it before that. So I wonder if there's like different rules for World Cup. Well, yeah, there's there are FIFA regulations and they require World Cup playing surfaces to measure approximately 115 yards by 75 yards across so the playing field right now at MetLife is 53.3 yards wide. Got it. So it's not wide enough. And um, to, re- to meet the regulations that have been set, they're going to have to widen the field. So this is, um, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about because there's, I said 2,000, but it's, it's really going to be more like 1,740 seats being removed. Um, but they so- will try to replace them in like higher areas, 
I mean, that's, that's what it sounds like, but how do you really do that? If you think about like, where are they going to put them? <laughs> well, read the article and we'll get some more details and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. So it says, um, the home of the New York jets and New York giants will look different when the FIFA world cup comes to North America in 2026. As part of a bid to host the World Cup final, stadium officials will widen the field with the removal of 1,740 seats, according to the Associated Press. To make up the disparity, seats will be removed from the corners of the stadium and replaced with movable sections after the tournament. Um, oh, that's you! I misunderstood what you were saying. I thought you were saying they're going to take the seats out and then put seats in a different section so people could still sit. Yeah. No, no, that's not what they're saying. Got it. They're saying they're going to put movable seats in. I was Afterwards. confused because I was saying, where are they going to put, they're saying after this is done, they'll put seats in like, at, um, if you ever went to like a Nets game when it was in Jersey, cause the, the devils and Nets shared a stadium, they'd have the seats that would come down. Remember that? I still have that at the Prudential center. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That yeah. Sure. For concerts. And I was all thinking that. of the yeah. IZOD center for a second there. Remember the IZOD center? Throwback. I remember the, is that the same as the continental? Yeah, that, yeah. That used to be continental airlines arena. I remember it as IZOD. <laughs> which RIPI is on so young. <laughs> so they're going to be able to bring in retractable seats after this is all done. Um, the stadium plans to ret- retain the 53.3 yard wide field for use during the J- July semi finals of the Copa America. Uh, and the upcoming change could help MetLife win its bid to host uh, the 2026 world cup final. So New Jersey governor, Phil Murphy said in October, the final decision as to host the finals was split between MetLife and AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas. What do you guys think? Which would you prefer? For the final? Yeah. I mean, like, I think it'd be really cool to have the final here in New Jersey. You know, it's 20 minutes away from us. Mm-hmm. Despite how crazy the traffic and congestion is going to be around that time, I don't want to be around the Meadowlands. Unless someone wants to hook it up with a ticket, I'll definitely be there. It'd be really, really awesome. But come on. Like, I, I got to say, I wanted to be at MetLife. AT&T Stadium in Dallas, incredible. I was going to say AT&T it's one of the so cool. much they have like nicer. I feel like they're going to get they it. They have the giant <laughs> LED board. That's why I feel like they are going to get it. But it's significantly bigger than MetLife too, right? Isn't I that like the biggest uh, NFL stadium? I know see. it's the biggest LED screen at, it's at a stadium. An, it's such a beautiful 80,000 people. So yeah, it has probably 10,000 more capacity. What's MetLife? Is it a 70? I thought it's 82. Really? I just so feel around like 80, yeah, 80 to 5. 80 to five. You know oh, what they're so going to say? Bigger. If it is at MetLife, you know what they're going to say? Hmm. Every time they put it on the stream, it'll New say York. New York. It's not going to be New Jersey. Of course. Which is, that should make us nuts. But I've, yeah, I've already seen them like advertising what do you think, stuff. What do you think the ticket price will be for the finals at MetLife? <laughs> Minimum. 1500 bucks? No. Way more. Really? At least 5000 It's that Probably. crazy? I think. Yeah. For the World Cup finals? Yes. Could it be me? Crazy. I don't care. <laughs> Genuinely, I could I could not care less. Would you I, even watch it on TV? Yeah, we uh, usually I watch typical, some of the games. Typical American, right over here. I just don't care about sports in general anymore. Mm. I just don't care. I could not care less. So Jordan, is if someone wants to hook it up with tickets for Jordan and I, we'd love to go <laughs> we'll, to the we'll World Cup. <laughs> I know it'd be really really cool. But yeah, I wonder. I I really hope that MetLife actually gets the bid, or even if they don't win this bid for the final, can they still be another? Stadium for World yeah, Cup I think games. I think they're guaranteed to be like one of the stadiums. I think like SoFi and like LA is going to be one. I didn't of them. realize though they had to widen the pitch though for World Cup. The like Copa America is staying the same size. Why World Cup is it bigger? I don't know. I mean, it's like that in hockey too. Like international play, the rink is bigger than the NHL. Yeah. So I guess it's the the same thing with that, where different leagues have different size fields and stuff. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. I just. I don't know. Are you going to go to any of the games, Argentina? I mean, I would love to see Argentina play, but like I said, ticket prices are going to be through the roof. I'm not paying over $1,000 to go see Oh, you're rich. You can handle it. I wish I was. No, I'm not. Maybe Jordan will buy us tickets. Maybe. We'll have to see. All right. Let's uh, move on to this next story. A mysterious chair in South Jersey has amassed a following of 13,000 people on Facebook. A chair. A chair, yeah. This is South... You know, people come at us. They say, we want more South Jersey news. Here you go. We're giving it to you right now. A chair. There is a chair. A mysterious mysterious chair. chair. And it was on top of an abandoned house, and then it fell over. And this lit the Facebook world on fire. So were people just waiting for it to fall? And they're just like, fall, fall, fall. So, yeah, this is... I don't have a lot of opinion on this one, but here, I'll read you... quite wild. So the article says a chair fell in South Jersey and 13,000 people heard about it. Perched precariously 
on the exposed top floor of a crumbling house along an oft-used back road to the Jersey Shore points, including Cape May and the Wildwoods, the chair was the subject of fascination for thousands of people who looked for and posted updates on a chair watch Facebook page. Chair watch. So they would just watch this chair. They just watch chairs. Any chair or just this chair? I, I said, it said a chair watch Facebook page. So I don't, maybe they watch more chairs. I don't, I don't know. So the chair watch group reached across the Delaware river into Pennsylvania, across the U S to points West and even to the United Kingdom with members checking in daily to see whether the chair had indeed met its demise. Why was it there? How did it stay there? Through wind, rain, and weather. What would happen if the owners, the house's owner, or Dennis Township, where it's located, decided to demolish the house? So these people were completely dedicated to looking at this chair to see how it's doing. And eventually, you know, on December 11th, we had a big, pretty big storm whip through New Jersey. Remember all that rain? And the chair fell. So more than 660 reactions and nearly 200 comments later, many of them questioning the veracity of the post, wondering whether Klein, who lives in the area, was pulling the, their legs, which is you know, great. People had to face the harsh reality the chair was down. So this is, I can't even believe this is an article. How was the chair even get up there in the first Josh, place? this was published in USA Today. I know. It's a big deal. Chair watch. This is just a chair, like a house that the roof had fallen off, and inside of the abandoned house there was That's a chair. That's crazy. And these people are going wild for it. Jordan, what is this about? I don't know, but I actually know a place in Scotch Plains where they have a tennis racket on their roof, and it's been there for at least 15 years. So I feel like we could make our own version of this. Are, do, are people aware of the tennis racket? Are I don't know if anyone else is aware of it, but it has been there ever since I started middle school. Does someone live there? Yes. And they don't, they don't touch it's it? It's just sitting on their roof. And I don't know how it stayed up there all these years. But are you serious? I just drove by like a couple of days ago and it's still there. That's crazy. How like you've, it's been there for that long. Yeah. And like my whole family, we try and like figure out like how it got up there. Like they just went and played. They got angry, just threw it up there and just never got it. It's and interesting. it's just sitting right there. It's, like the it's not even high. Like you could probably just jump up and grab it because the roof is really low. What triggers us as human beings where we're so fascinated by things falling or things that are not supposed to be where they are. And they're just like, we're just trying to follow their life progress. I feel like we just try and like figure out why it's there. Like seeing something like that or like this tennis racket, I'm just like, why is it on their roof? Why have they not taken it down? Like, is there some kind of hidden meaning behind it or like, cause that's even crazier than this chair. Like this chair, like the roof, like got blown off, you know, it was an abandoned building. This tennis racket, someone lives there. Someone lives there. Like like, why isn't it being touched? Get a ladder and, take it down yeah but they've left it there for so long you ever notice how when you grow up in an area and you see something so often it becomes familiar and you don't even realize you're what you're looking at yeah, yeah. has ever happened and then you one day you're like wow that's kind of weird if you think about it like i can't something happened recently but i know that feeling but i think for something like that you see it so often that it starts to take on its own lore like you want to know the background yeah i'm it's like i'm just it. dying to know you should Why knock on the door. There. You should just knock and film and be like, look. That would be a good story. That tennis racket's been on your roof for 15 years. What's is going it, on here? Do you just not care? Is it like the Walter White pizza where he throws it? And it's just, yeah, that's what I always think. It like throws hmm. it on the roof, just sits there forever. So what do you guys think about this chair watch? Would you want to join a chair watch group? Okay, if someone texted me the day of and you're like, yo, 15,000 of us are following. This chair's about to fall today. Check this out. We're going to go watch it. You already know I'm driving up there. I'm like, let's go check it out. There's something about like the energy of being a, with a group of thousands of other people cheering on one little thing, especially it being Wait, so were random. Were they there cheering for the chair to fall? I think it was a live stream, right? Or was this in person, Josh? No, nobody was in person because it, was, it wasn't even like a stream. It was a page where they would post up photo updates. Got it. Okay. And then eventually after the storm whipped through... Someone posted, mm. the chair's gone. So no one actually saw video of it falling? No, there's no video. Oh, that's a heartbreaker. But there's like paintings of the chair. That like, would have been really this cool. This is very cultic, the way it all went down. I'm trying to find on the article the actual post. I like how there's drawings of it. Like yeah. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> People the, worship this thing. They love the chair. They love this chair. It's the... It's the um, that's just crazy. Here's the actual image of that was posted of the chair being down. I know. That's the, isn't it that interesting how it's just hanging there? Weird. Why? But like, who was the first person to be like, wow, 
What kind of chair is it though? Is it like a, a nice chair? chair? No, it's just like a classic four legs, two arms, wooden so, chair. That sounds like a good looking chair. Yeah, with red cushion. Ooh. So let's move on to the last story of today. This is um this is a contentious one. Uh this is Dice Mobile. Oh, I didn't even realize you left this for last. I forgot we had this story. Yeah. The border crisis has reached New Jersey this past week as busloads of migrants have been rejected from New York City. This is a big one. Yeah, this is a spicy one right here. Spice station, the spice rack. Um, so what's happening here is Eric Adams has put restrictions on the hours in which buses can arrive at terminals because New York City has it has become an, a prominent issue for Eric Adams where he is getting really tired of the migrant situation because I think it's become a lot. Um, the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott has been putting migrants on the buses and sending them to New York city yeah. to make a point, I guess. And right now, because there's so many buses already just coming into the terminals into New York city. That's why he put these restrictions on because there's just, there's too, too many buses, too many people coming into New York city at one time. So New York city has filed a $708 million lawsuit against 17 charter bus operators and transportation companies who have transported 33,600 migrants to the city in an effort to recoup the costs incurred to provide shelter and services. So here's the one thing I, I think, this is where I'll say Eric Adams and Murphy both take an L. Governor Abbott's continued use of migrants as political pawns is not only chaotic and inhumane, but makes clear he puts politics over people, Today's lawsuit should serve as a warning to all those who break the law in this way. Um, so, so Eric Adams is saying, you know, they're they're you're using people as pawns. But if that's really what he thinks, then why does he not just make more space for them and let them live in New York City? That's why I was confused by that quote too. Because he, Adams now, should be like, all right, let's make New York City a, a sanctuary state. Let's bring all these people in. Because now he's using them as pawns because he's clo- he's closing the bus terminals and they're ending up in New Jersey. Yeah. And now Murphy's like, wait, wait, wait. Abbott's using them as pawns and sending them now to me in Jersey. And like nobody really wants them. Yeah. So it's like, it's like you're all hypocrites. I think- Abbott's point and Texas's point from what I understand, and this is, it's a divisive issue everywhere, but Texas, it seems like Texas, it seems like this is pretty, it, it's becoming an issue that's affecting the local economy. They don't know what to do because if you see the videos online, there's lots of people coming into Texas right now. Yeah. So these Southern governors are sending them to the States that are having a large sway in the politics that are allowing for this to make the point that, Hey, we got to sort out what's our plan here. You know, like we could be bipartisan, figure it out. Um, and now Eric Adams, he, he's changed his perspective so much in the last year that it's like, I don't know. It just seems like, why can't they all just come together to find a solution here? Yeah. It's a really messy spot to be in. So, um, so to get around Eric Adams executive order, restricting the times that buses can arrive, they have been dropping off migrants in New Jersey transit stations, um, in Edison, Fanwood, Secaucus, and Trenton since New Year's weekend. Have you seen anything in Fanwood area? There's been like a ton of talk. Really? I haven't seen anything personally. What's but the like, talk been of the town? The whole town has just been like, what? Like this is happening here? Like Really? Yeah, because they've apparently been dro- like dropping them off at the Fanwood station. Which oh, and that's the Because they, they want the people to go onto the trains into New York City, but yeah. they say like some migrants are not going on the trains. They're yeah, staying I mean, they in these towns. They don't have to get on the train. They don't have to, but then the mayors of these towns are like, we have no money. We don't have anywhere to house these people. The so what are we doing? It's such a random station for them to it, drop it them is. off. It really it's is. such a small Wait, station. It's like, but what's the town been saying? And people are upset. Yeah, people are like okay, probably pissed. This is the issue with politics. This is the issue with federal politics is People vote one way and then it comes near them and they're like, no, 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 no. Wait, hold on, hold on. Like, this is the thing with Murphy is he's, he's like, oh, we got to, we got to be more humane. We can find out, you know, an answer here, but it's like, Murphy, your million dollar mansion is nowhere near this situation. You don't have to worry about how it's going to affect your local community. Now, members of fan would, I'd imagine <laughs> would be totally in favor of, of helping people, but now it's in their neighborhood and you're like, everyone's a hypocrite. Well, this is like the Martha's vineyard thing too, right? When they sent all the migrants out there and all the rich people are like, no, we don't want these people here. When they voted and that's how they vote. It's very like, I don't know. There's just a little, a lot of hypocrisy, every, every area of this issue. And 
I don't know. I don't did, know what, did what you see uh, Edison's mayor? What he said, what, what, Joshy. What? I saw a video of him, but people were coming at him. Well, yeah, because he was just like, these migrants are not welcome here. They need hmm. to, we have no space for them and they got to get out of here. They got to keep on going to New York City. And so many people online were flipping out being like, 90% of Edison is Indian, blah, blah, blah. But then everyone's bouncing back being like, everyone here is legal. Hmm. That's the biggest difference. So that, that's been all the controversy there. Well, I think, I think um, something needs to be figured out. I saw a video of like, you see these caravan videos where yeah. it's like, I saw one recently, 20,000 people just walking. And I don't know what the solution is. I mean, I have, that's why we talk about nonsense in New Jersey news. That's like a real issue. I guess, I guess the solution is harsher border control enforcement. It's something you got to care about because again, so we just had a story about people are leaving New Jersey and then you have 33,600 people going to Manhattan, which is a fair amount of people, you know, to have in like the last six yeah. months. Well, in five days. Oh, that was the five days. That was five days. But they said, they said a $708 million lawsuit against 17 charter bus operate, operators. So they didn't give a timeline on that, 33,600. That was five days. I heard hundreds of thousands of people are crossing. I just so know it's a lot sense. of people. So that's how I read it, which is well, crazy. I think, I think... Um, this is where in a bipartisan sort of way, I'm going to make a statement because I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to have a political take. I'm just, the first thing I was saying is calling with hypocrisy of both of everybody in this situation. But what I will say is it is unfair that Texas is expected to sort all this out because they live, unfortunately for you, Texas, you live next to the border, right? Yeah. Like you figure it out. Like we don't want to deal with it. And we we're all very, you know, welcoming and, and woke. And then it comes to New Jersey or New York and, and we're like, Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on. So it's like, well, that's maybe that's the point Abbott's trying to make is like, this has become a really big problem for our local economy. And you guys should have to help us figure it out. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what Greg Abbott has even said about any of this. I'm not trying to, well, I, think, I don't even like talking about the politics, the political stuff in this podcast, but well, the, like, yeah, this is what's going on. You can't, you can't be mad at Abbott for busing people into New Jersey especially if you are empathetic towards migrant communities. And if now it's coming to Fanwood, which is probably <laughs> primarily people that it would be in favor of open borders. Right. I would assume. And now they're like, wait, 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 wait hold on. Let's think there's no room. Like, there's no room. Jer Jersey's already a mess. Our roads are already like, we had a story last week that we're going to let people drive on the shoulders of highways because we're, we're overpopulated and we've had poor infrastructure planning in the state I don't know. I just think this is, this is, oh, it's such a, it's such a mess. And Eric Adams to hear him change his tune is kind of funny. That's what's been crazy. And I think that's He's, the point that the uh, Abbott is trying to make or like get yeah. across um, is that these cities, you know, the mayors have declared them the cities as sanctuary cities mm -hmm. and it's kind of, you know, enticing people to come. So it's like, you have all these cities kind of making promises to these people like, Oh, you could come live here and stuff. So and you have all these people crossing and then they come here and it's like, oh, it's not there's, what yeah, they expected. There's too many they, of you guys. Yeah, they're landing up in Texas and it's like, Texas is like, well, you know, we can't handle all these people. Well, for they them, send them there and it's like, they're going to land up on the streets, mm. which is terrible. For the mayor of New York City to say, well, this is a serious issue that we can't handle. You think New York is a very wealthy city. It's a big city. This is a big thing going on. Like you got to, there's a lot of people. I mean, if you've walked, my dad works in mid Midtown and um, he was telling me like, if you go up like fifth Avenue, there were just, there's just lines of people on the sidewalk, just hanging out, I guess, waiting to be processed into a facility to live in. I don't really know what, what's going on, but do you see the people just on the sidewalks? He's just, sleeping he's bags like thousands of people on the sidewalks. He's like, it's crazy. So I don't know what they're going to do here. I, I, it's kind of like apocalyptic, apocalyptic, like to think about. Well, looking yeah. at those photos and videos, it's so sad. Well, like, what's the plan? This is what I don't get. There's is, no plan. It's what just, is the there's plan? There's too many people. And that's why Adams is like, you know, he's pretty setting restrictions for the amount of buses and times they can come in because it's getting out of control. Hmm. And that's what happens when you want to open up your city. Yeah. It's going to get to this point. So no one has an answer. Well, I think, um, Again, it's easy to have political stances and to virtue signal from an, from an ivory tower. Yeah, it's easy to be like, oh, very you know, easy. we we welcome everybody. We're very loving people, and then, <laughs> you know, and then it happens, and you're like, well, we are loving. We we love these people, but uh, they got to leave. And you're like, well, hold on a second here. That's, you know, what do you really think then? You know, is it is so? 
And that's the issue with the politics in our country is we make caricatures of both sides, make caricatures of each other. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, they'd be like, well, Greg, Greg Abbott, he's a racist. And then it comes to your city and you're like, well, I don't want it. It's like, well, are you a racist now? Or is it like, is there, is there more, um, what's the term? Uh, what is it like? What's the term for when in conversation there's, there's more detail. Nuance. There's more, yeah, there's more, is there more nuance to the issue on both sides that we got to kind of work through here? And I think, the, me- the news media loves no nuance. They love to slap a label because what that does is it makes us divided. It makes us all hate each other. It makes the politics more dicey and it gets better clicks. Look, we now we make videos where we like to see how many views they get. It's, it's addicting to post a video. Yeah. And we don't even make money on those views like, like CNN or Fox or any of these. But we know there are ways to get more views. Yeah. Like it's not, you figure it out really quickly. Mm-hmm. Like we could- we could like there's certain buzzwords that when you say them, people are going to respond. And we don't we don't play that game. We try to just be humans and talk about the news. Like I'm trying to be very careful with the way we address. Yeah, this. we're not going to clickbait because you. My goal isn't isn't to divide our audience, but like you got to have a perspective on this. It's it is yep. it is relevant, you know, to your community now. Um, but I will say, I think uh, these guys all got to come together. These governors should just sit down. The federal government, you know, President Biden needs to get involved and they need to figure it out. But it seems they're not interested in that, which is the weird thing. It's like, what's actually going on here? The Georgia tragedy is the absolute worst. I did not mean to click that. Sorry. <laughs> all right. So that's the last story of the day. We wanted to leave you guys on a really fun note of uh, 33,600 people are moving to New Jersey. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah. I want to get on the fan web page, pages, Jordan, and see what's going on. Yeah, I got to talk to my dad about it. See what uh, he probably knows, right? Yeah, because I'm not on Facebook or anything. I just know. But if know. I gave him a call right now, would he give us a take? It'd probably be a really bad take. But okay, you could, you could see what he says. Should I do that or no? Ah, that's fine. That's we, we, we already we already talked about the story. <laughs> um, all right, and that's uh, that's the news for the week. That's the first uh, week of the year. Nice. Knock on wood. <laughs> Knock on vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for listening. We will be back next Friday with all the New Jersey news we think you need to know for your week. Whoa. I just choked. Good. I'm okay. I'm alive. And, uh, hey, we'll see you guys next Friday. Have a great week. Hopefully we get some snow. Hopefully we get a nice little powder day on Saturday. That'd be cool. And uh, Probably yeah. not. We'll see you then. Later. Later. See you. You're listening to the Garden State. Dirty Jerry.